Welcome back, folks, to the WP Tonic Show. This is episode 452. We've got a friend of the show back. He's been on the show a couple of times. Um, time flies, though, so I thought it was time to have Jake Goldman, president and founder of 10 Up, back on the show. So, Jake, would you like to give a very quick introduction of yourself and what 10 Up basically does? Sure. Excited to uh, be chatting again. So uh, I'm the president and founder, as you said, of a company called 10up. It's 10up.com. We're a full service agency that's focused at crafting amazing websites, apps, digital experiences, mostly for larger organizations that are in some ways doing storytelling content on the web. That can mean a marketing site. That can mean a publication. There's a lot of ways. You know, it could be a knowledge internet. A lot of different forms that content and narrative takes on the web, but we're not fundamentally doing like ERP applications or games or fundamentally in the content uh, space in digital. We're about 180 some people distributed all around the world with major concentrations in Europe and the United States. Um, and yeah, that's, and uh, I spend my, most of my business days working on the, working on the company. Oh, no, thank you for agreeing to come on the show. I know you're very busy, Jake, and it's much appreciative that you my pleasure. agreed to come back for another chat with me. And I've got my great co-host, the good-looking one with me, Adrian. And would you like to introduce yourself to the new listeners and viewers? Hi, everybody. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Adrian. I'm the CEO and founder of a company called Groundhog, and we produce and sell digital marketing and sales automation plugins for WordPress. And I just want to thank the new listeners and viewers. Last month was our biggest viewing um, figures ever for the show. And I really appreciate all of you that have been recommending the show to other people in the WordPress, online marketing, and e-learning industries. It's much appreciative. Before I go into the main um, elements of the conversation with Jake, I want to mention our major sponsor, who's been sponsoring the show for the past couple of years, and that is Kinster Hosting. And Kinster Hosting is just fantastic. It hosts the WP Tonic website. Um, if you're a developer, power user, looking for something to manage a uh, learning management system, WooCommerce, you really want to look at Kinster. They offer some of the best performance and best technology really aimed at WordPress on the market at the present moment, in my opinion. And they're just fabulous people to work with. You get the power of Google Cloud, you get a really fantastic custom UX interface, and best of all, you get some of the best support on the market at the present moment. People that really understand WordPress and understand how to set up and support a WordPress website. So if that sounds interesting, go over to Kinsta, tell them that you heard about them from the show. That would be really appreciated. So on to the interview. So Jake, um, you were, you know, 10 Up was on the tavern recently. Um, you released on GitHub some actions. Um, seems a really interesting co um, concept. And also you've got some of your own plugins. I thought we'd start off with seeing what you think of GitHub and what 10 Up plans to do with that platform basically yeah i mean i'm in uh sounds cliche to say but i'm incredibly excited about what github's been doing recently they've really taken it from a place where you store a repository and you store code to really a full automation integration platform for shipping code so they one of their larger more notable features they've been trialing for the last year and sort of formally announced and rolled out is github actions what GitHub Actions let you do is trigger events, trigger a series of behaviors after a code submission happens. The more classic way people tend to use that kind of integration is things like automatically run an accessibility test or automatically run a code scan on your code when, uh, when code gets uh, pushed up. One more, I, mean, I, I dare I say, more innovative, pro innovative approach that uh, our team came up with and, and major credit to our open source practice and Helen Hosandi in particular um, was to use that automation service when you push code for people that have to maintain WordPress plugins on the WordPress plugin repo to automatically push up certain assets or, or code changes or version release to WordPress.org. It's a little technical for those that have never released a plugin. I suspect a lot of your audience knows it. WordPress.org, the way you put on the official plugin repo, your plugin still uses a fairly aged way of doing version control. It's all relative spe relatively speaking, I guess, but I use a subversion, which is just not what modern developers use to do uh, most code contribution and most uh, 
uh, uh, development. A lot of people have their plugins on GitHub. That's where they do their active development. That's where their audience comes and contributes. It's where modern developers and most current developers are going. So we were able to build a solution that to automatically trigger all the annoying stuff you probably don't want to learn if you're a modern developer about pushing to WordPress.org's subversion repository and just automate that whole process, both for entirely shipping new versions of plugins, as well as more routine stuff that we have to do all the time, like updating in your readme file the, the version of WordPress that you're tested up until, um, or updating you know, frequently asked questions or docs or images or sort of just the assets that aren't the code itself on your repo. So um, I'm really excited about it. We've gotten a lot of traction on it. It's, I think, a good uh, example of the way that Tenup is very committed to solutions that simplify things for developers and content creators and a really good example of the way that we also you know, don't just hold that to ourselves, but are very determined to lift up an entire community, lift up the ecosystem. For any developers that are listening, I'm curious to know what the actual like level of experience is to adopt uh, to adopt this new kind of like way of pushing. Because as a developer, I have to go back and forth in between GitHub and then move the changes from GitHub to Subversion and then do the push from Subversion. So like I am like your core audience right here. So how easy would it be for me for me to go and adopt this solution like right now? Great question. I, mean, I think easy is all relative. I'd say if you're comfortable using GitHub, you with a with a very little bit of learning just how GitHub Actions works, I think it's pretty easy. Just yeah, so like an, an hour, two hours, three hours? I'd say, I mean, it depends how sophisticated you are. I'd say if you have some right. basic familiarity with action kind of integrations, I'd say less than an hour. Assuming you already have a repo and you're not right. creating a plugin and all the other stuff that comes with setting up your plugin for the first time. Um, if you've never done an actions or like a continuous integration, there might be just some basic like fundamental trying to even understand how it works you might want to do. That could take it longer, but uh, you know, for anybody Very cool. comfortable with GitHub, it's I think a pretty easy integration. Right on. Yeah, I think it's quite exciting because I think a lot more could be done to standard, standardize and stand, standardize. I can't talk at the present moment, this is this. Uh, um, but also just make the whole process a lot easier. I think it's really got a little bit bogged down, isn't it, Jake? Yeah, I think for sure. I think uh, hopefully these kind of tools can sort of abstract away some of the technical debt we've incurred. So, you know, WordPress as a, I can't even keep track of the anniversaries that we're at these days. It's got to be coming on 20, right? Yeah. Um, like they're, you know, you have a 20-year-old piece of software that has committed itself to backwards compatibility. There can be some rough edges that are legacy technical debt. A lot of that is in our development ecosystem and sort of what it means, you know, what WordPress.org looks like, what, uh, you know, what integration for WordPress means. Um, the more that these sort of like modern tools can at least abstract away for a newer generation, more modern generation of developers, I think the better off we are. Um, and I think the WordPress community has shown a real commitment to that. So like putting WordPress.org's code base on GitHub to welcome a different generation and a different set of contributors some years ago. Yeah, that's great. Over to you, Adrian. Uh, so you're also doing some really other kind of interesting stuff in the WordPress community that is not necessarily related to GitHub Actions, but you're introducing artificial intelligence. Everybody loves that buzzword. You're, but you're introducing AI into WordPress in a pretty unique way. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so we, uh, I guess we're starting with the plug, we have a plugin called Classify Plugin, Classify spelled AI at the end instead of with a Y, because um, uh, we're trying to be a little too clever here. And <laughs> fundamentally what Classify does is it uses AI, and if you want to make that distinction, I know people bundle them together, but very specifically for the most part, machine learning technologies. And trying to figure out how do we apply what are a rich set of technologies that a lot of like closed CMSs are using, that a lot of new platforms are using, how do we bring that, start bringing that technology and experimenting with bringing that technology into a web publishing and a website ecosystem? And specifically for us, the application that we see in terms of the broader audience that we can get back to uh, is how do we integrate that with WordPress uh, as a platform? So uh, Classify connects to popular machine learning services that are in the cloud, all of which have free tiers. So if you're doing this at massive volume of publishing or integration, you might need to pay a, a, uh, pay a use fee. If you're a smaller publisher or have your own website, um, you can probably just use their free tier um, and be more than, uh, you know, be more than successful. So it integrates with like IBM Watson, uh, uh, Microsoft's Azure AI services at the moment, which you can, everyone can again register for for free. Um, and then provide solutions like automatic tagging or automatic taxonomic classification. You don't have to assign it to your tags. You can have a you know, behind the scenes hidden taxonomy. Um, so 
you know, automatic tagging and classification. Anybody that's worked in a, you know, a website or a newsroom with more than two or three people creating content knows that like the creep of misspelled tags and categories and everybody's different lens on what the, how something should be cataloged is a perpetual problem. So the idea of even if those tags aren't perfect, the idea of letting a machine learning algorithm, letting something in the cloud do that classification for you can really both streamline the process, remove error that can sort of hurt SEO where you have all these misspellings and you have these like one article pages in archives. It's also a really interesting SEO insight we found. So like if you think about like what Google is doing when you to classify your content, what Google, how Google is understanding your site, they're not human beings going into reading every page. They are also creating machine learning based bots that try to go in and understand what your website's about. Of course, they don't tell you exactly how they do that. They want to move them, you know, they, they very, for good reasons, they want to constantly sort of move that ball, but having a different set of services go in and say, Hey, as a bot, let me tell you, these are the things I understand this article to be about can actually be a really interesting insight into how other services like Google can see your site. There's some other really neat tech in there, the automatic alt text generations that will send your images up to the AI services, return, especially for more generic images. Uh, an alt text description, really important for accessibility, also helpful to SEO. We're so getting- like if you were to like upload an image of your like, a woman with a like a cup of coffee, right, to to your yep. blog post or to, I guess the, the, the media library would automatically generate like, you know, this, the, the whatever the alt, uh, alt text of the image is like woman with coffee. Yes. Like that. Exactly. It's actually, you know, it, I, so it has, when you can get really into it, it has like a, uh, the way you can configure it. We have, I think we set it to 80% by default with like hooks and filters. You can change it to whatever you want. There's a threshold for certainty that they'll return. So they'll say like I'm 80 or 90% certain that this is the description. You probably don't, if like you're uploading screenshots of your custom application or taking photos of your family, other than probably not gonna generic work. man and woman on front of table, you know, you know, it's not a, it's not a magic elixir to the problem, but for it, it's, it's fairly eerie for things like celebrities or like just, you know, if you just have like coffee cup sitting on table, like it's, it's eerily good. Um, those services at this point, it's the same type, fundamental technology. If you have like a, you know, for either if you're on like Google photos or iPhoto or Apple photos or something. Mm-hmm. The technology that like automatically classifies things you can like search in for a tree and automatically pulls up your photos it's that same kind of technology so like photo descriptions are a pretty well trod machine learning area where we've gotten pretty good in these cloud services at descriptions so wow yeah you got, so, the, you got the basic idea before we go into the break is this currently available yeah so if you go to classify plugin you can it's uh you can download it right from the website there's no cost to it it's a totally free plugin we do ask that you just uh you sign up on the site to get it that's because we want to be able to have a relationship and reach out to people especially if there are major updates or breaking updates um to the plugin but and it's and it's also on github speaking of which <laughs> you can download it there as well push with uh push with your new github actions probably <laughs> push, uh so yeah like it's actually not on the wordpress.org repo so not ah, okay. GitHub actions. But. All right. I think we'll go for our break. We'll be back in a few moments, folks. We're coming back. Hopefully you've enjoyed the new show intro and new adverts. I thought I'd go up, up a little bit up market and go classical. That's if my editor remembers to put the new intro in this episode. Um, but before we go back into this great interview with Jake from 10 Up, I just want to talk about one of our other sponsors, and that's Lifter LMS. Lifter LMS, and um, what can I say about Chris and Tom? They're a great partnership. It's a great plugin. If you're learning, looking to build a learning management system and looking to build it on a great platform, i.e. WordPress, and that's what I think you should be doing, you really want to look at this plugin because it's got all the bells and whistles and it's got a track record as well for support and functionality. And they're also building out a load of new functionality for the plugin in 2020. So go over to Lift NMS and tell them that you heard about them from this podcast. So, um, Jake, um, I love thing I was t- been really impressed is your work with uh, another learning management plugin in the WordPress space. That was Learn Dash. And um, you seem, I was really impressed with the UX design and the functionality. So um, do you, what, what are your views about WordPress and its, and 
what we can look forward to in 2020 for it to become more and more of an application platform? Yeah, so my view on WordPress is there's a series of really important applications that are predominantly about content delivery, that WordPress is well positioned, especially as it gets smarter with JavaScript and it embraces different kinds of layouts and it embraces its RESTful API. Well, WordPress is well positioned to be a major player in. So like a learning management system is a great example of that. Fundamentally, LMSs are delivering content, right? They're delivering learning modules, maybe video, maybe media, different ways of consuming content, but they're fundamentally about knowledge delivery. WordPress is a fantastic foundation to build an application like a learning management system because it is fundamentally good at content delivery and content organization and content management. I think like app, you know, mobile apps, web applications that are fundamentally about sharing media information, WordPress is well positioned to be a, a good choice as a delivery vehicle. Um, you know, I tend to get more skeptical when we get into talking about it just as like as a generic application platform. Like, do I think like if Uber wanted to rebuild their engine for like car tracking that it makes sense to do that in WordPress? I don't. Like, do I think any app, you know, do I think I would build the next generation video conferencing platform on a WordPress? No. Right. So I think when we talk about WordPress as an app platform, yes, there are certain kind of applications that I think it's really well positioned and gives you a lot of stuff for free really well positioned to support. I also want to caution, I always, I've always sort of cautioned this community about trying to push it and think of it as just a very generic, like programming language based foundation for building absolutely any kind of application. Cause I just think that if you, you push WordPress into that space and you start getting into an argument that's about less about its merits as an interface platform for content and more an argument about it's just basic and en underlying engineering capabilities as a framework and like, I, I don't think if you're looking to build your next gen video platform or your next gen like car tracking system, like I, I don't think WordPress holds up innards wise compared to other more modern application stacks. So there are things it's really good at. I think we should focus on building applications, mobile applications, LMSs, intranets, building on top of its core strengths, which is content delivery and organization. Yeah, that's a really fun, you know, I know last time you came on the show you, you um we had a similar discussion and you haven't changed your position but i also know other people that really push a, a slightly different view but you know um i basically agree with you actually uh, um so over to you adrian so what kind of so bait you know continue the conversation we should focus really hard on making wordpress the ultimate content delivery system that we possibly can and focusing only on solutions that do content delivery in what ways do you see that we could drastically improve the content delivery system that we already have so are there current are, are there currently things that you see because i mean if you look through the roster of 10 ups uh home there are some serious businesses and organizations on there that do a massive content delivery on a daily basis where could wordpress improve on by default that doesn't involve any like sort of like hacking it or anything where could wordpress improve in order to improve that content delivery flow yeah it's a great question and to some degree it depends on the part of the market that you're aiming at because i think there are different challenges in different segments of the market you go uh I'm gonna say you go down market to like very small personal sites and sort of the small side of SMB sites. And I think fundamentally uh, its challenge uh, is continuing to evolve like it's block editor to make more dynamic layouts, more dynamic templating that doesn't feel like you're, you have to get a degree to create mm -hmm. it. So it's so like competing with like the square spaces and the, and the you know. Which is where we're going. Right? I mean, that's where it's all headed, isn't it? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think to some degree, I think at, the, at least at the SMB side of the market, you start moving more up into the larger side of businesses, you start moving up more into the enterprise, it's a very different set of challenges that it's less about like, I want a site that I can click and, you know, drag and drop, click and click and build. And it's more about, it starts bumping into challenges that have more to do with things like personalization workflow, uh, you know, things like machine learning and AI that we're dealing with, things like content distribution and syndication to multiple channels. Uh, the good news is, is part of the reason we're still very, you know, it's, WordPress is still our preferred platform. It's actually very bullish about the things WordPress is doing in that space. I could, I could chew your ear all day long on like in the very, you know, high end market we work in, like it has competitive weaknesses in that space when it comes to things like, uh, like personalization in particular, um, multilingual is a challenge on the high end of the market, but 
if you, you know, believe the roadmap that's been laid out to us for Gutenberg, multilingual core multilingual support, at least some foundational version is on the roadmap uh, for the next couple of years. Um, I think that if it wants to be a first class platform for like collaboratively laying out content and pages, I think the, the sort of the synchronous like Google Docs like editing module uh, is an area that it has to conquer that is also on the Gutenberg roadmap that is also part of this transformation uh, that the WordPress editor is going through. I actually uh, recently saw a video on, on Facebook. It's like, it's like they have some sort of like very like early beta version of that, of that collaborative working. So I'm like super excited to see what that looks like in the future. So that you don't click yeah. on a post and it's like, you know, so-and-so is currently editing this post. It just drops you in and shows you where they're currently working. So you yep. can work elsewhere. Editing this block. Yeah, I think that's, so I think we're, we're, we're fundamentally moving in the right direction. We're fundamentally embracing the right things to keep the platform, keep the platform strong. Um, so I, I'm bullish on it continuing to be a great solution for that part of the market. And I think well, like, it's healthy for us to have a healthy ecosystem of solutions like that classify a plugin like other solutions that are out there in the ecosystem. Like I'm sure many of the solutions you, uh, you offer as integrations um, that round out that core with the, the sort of the missing pieces at different segments of the market. Mm -hmm. So what do you, uh, what do you think of WordPress as kind of like, uh, do, do you think it would be possible at one point for co companies focused on, let's say content delivery, because that's where WordPress is really like, you know, that, as you said, that's what we're really, really, really good at. What, do you do you believe that WordPress could be used as kind of like your all-in-one solution for let's say let's say the bottom of the market, not necessarily like your enterprise level companies, you know Fortune 500s, but SMBs and like lower end of the market. Do you think WordPress makes a good all-in-one solution to do all of your like your business through there? So let's say you have your your CRM, your e-commerce, and your content delivery all in WordPress, or should we be focusing on separating that out? Uh, can it's a dangerous question when you're talking about technology. Probably can if you want to bend it hard enough. Do should. I think, do I think we? Yeah. Do I think we should? No, I don't. Like I don't think WordPress is go, ever going to be a tenth of the uh, a tenth of like the the you know invoice management system that something like a, a FreshBooks or a QuickBooks is going to be. I don't think WordPress is going to be. I mean, maybe for very basic small business needs, but I don't think it's going to be the email marketing platform that Mailchimp is. You can kind of integrate with Mailchimp. You can simplify the workflow to send things over there make the process of getting things out easier. But I uh, like my, and I think I can say authentically for the better part of my career, I've always had this motto of like one size fits all if it's known nobody particularly well. And I think trying to be a, you know, a jack of all trades, Swiss army knife, do all things. What you end up with in my experience is a platform that's not particularly great at any one of those things. Like I'll be a little haughty here and say like HubSpot trying to create their own CMS. Like I, I just think that's a silly direction to push, and I think that's that's a worn space. So I think all they're going to do is the diminish diminish the value of the platform by creating what will probably feel like a second rate CMS, and then sort of devaluing devaluing themselves. I think WordPress trying to solve for like where your email marketing platform and where your invoice management system and tool are trying to do everything just creates a subpar experience. I think the future is specialization. I think the future is companies and businesses and software solutions, open source or not, that are really good in a particular space and are really good in this world of RESTful APIs and all these standards that we've built are really good at integrating with other platforms. Um, I don't know much about Groundhog, but just hearing like the pitch, like I imagine that may resonate for someone like yourself with the idea that like, Rather than WordPress trying to solve every single problem, the real key is how do you make WordPress play really well with the solutions that are with solutions that are really good mm. yeah. outside well, the ecosystem. It's not to say that I don't think there are more places WordPress can expand into. It's not to say I don't think there's areas for innovation in WordPress. There might be some frontiers we can conquer and really do well uh, with. I would just caution us from sort of losing what we're really good at, being really good at something, and trying to become this generalist platform that kind of has this like mediocrity of everything trying to do everything around it well we're going to continue that kind of thread folks um we're going to um in the bonus content um that you'll be able to watch on the wp you'll be able to watch the whole interview on the wp tonic website and our youtube channel but we're going to wrap up the podcast part of the show here so jake um how can people find out more about you and your company and what you're up to 
Uh, so 10up.com, tenup.com is our website. Our, you know, I'd say at least once a week on average, not a couple times a week, there's, uh, there are new blog posts uh, on there uh, letting you know what we're up to and what we're working on. It's also just 10up on Twitter. I'm Jake M. Gold, J-A-K-E-M-G-O-L-D on Twitter. Those are probably the right places to go to, to see what I'm thinking about and see what the company's working on. That's great. And Adrian, how can people find out more about you and what you're up to? You can go to groundhog.io. You can find out uh, all of the plugins that we offer in terms of uh, digital marketing and marketing automation for WordPress. And that's great, folks. And if you really want to support the show, go over to iTunes and give us a review. It really does help the show. Good, bad, ugly, or indifferent. I don't care. Just leave us a review. It's great to read them. And try and be funny. Brilliant and laugh. A, f- a smile to my face is a great achievement. We'll see you next week, folks, with another great interview. See you soon, thanks. Bye. So on to some bonus content. Um, so uh, I recently read a book called Winner Take All, and I'm going to butcher this guy's surname, Arnard Grigarnardus. Um, I just destroyed his surname. I apologize. But um, basically, it's a, he's been doing the circuit and doing a lot of interviews and... Um, his basic argument is, Jake, that in this age, we've got this whole Silicon Valley, Google, um, um, Amazon, uh, Amazon um, they wrap themselves in the language of, of liberals, but their actions aren't very liberal at all. And I, I, as I was finishing the book off, um, it really occurred to me that really maybe a poster child for this conflicted um, is Matt Moeg because after listening to his recent podcast interview with Dave, one of the founders of Basecamp and a leading founder contributor to Ruby on Rails, and he's total, I feel his total inability intellectually to answer David's fundamental questions about open source and about how Matt runs WordPress, that he is the one of the poster child for this conflict. What are your own views, Jake? Yeah, it's, uh, my views are probably complicated in the subject. I should say I talk to Matt semi-often. Like, I don't think he has any malicious intent with his, with his perspective. I think he's just, is proud of what he's built and excited to see, really believes in WordPress and is excited to see it proliferate as a platform. Um, you know, I, I don't think a world where WordPress is the only CMS or really the only viable CMS with a bunch of like small uh, uh, sort of incapable platforms is a healthy future. I believe in the importance of competition. I can tell you from the part of the market that I sit in, which is like an enterprise, like there is very healthy competition. We may dominate in overall metrics, but I, you know, WordPress is very, you know, in the corporate high enterprise part of the market, there is a very healthy set of competitors. WordPress is often not an obvious choice. It's often, frankly, an underdog yeah. uh, in many of those uh, in many of those discussions. And, and as much as I would like WordPress to be this, the choice more often, I also know that that it, it challenges us in the ecosystem and the integrations we build, and challenges WordPress in healthy ways. Um, so uh, don't I guess don't put me in the like I want to have see WordPress own 100 percent of CMS market share uh, space. I, I think he makes an interesting, uh, and it's not, I'll confess, nothing I've given deep, deep thought to, so I um, feel a little, uh, a little underprepared, but I think he makes an interesting argument about like, is a, is a free and open source platform fundamentally different in some ways than like a closed operating system or a closed set of SaaS technologies uh, as, a, as a monopoly platform? Um, I think that's an argument that probably bears a lot of conversation. That's atypical in the kind of discussion that the like uh, that the winner takes all argument uh, tries to propose. There is something to be said for like if we really felt like Matt was malicious or somebody really wanted to build a competitor. Yes, they they literally could use all of that code, owe Matt nothing other than a credit, and take it in a different direction. Um, you know, well, there are certain, there are, it's never really been legally aggressively legally tested, but there are certain freedoms in the license that comes with WordPress. So you could make an argument that it's something more like um, everyone's a winner. <laughs> well, everyone's a winner, but like uh, you know, like there's one form. Well, I guess that's not entirely true. In each country, there is one form of electricity delivery. There are not multiple competing forms of electricity of electricity delivery. 
if it's open, if any, if any company can produce that electricity, that kind of electricity, is it a monopoly or is it, a, is, is it almost like a de facto standard? And I utility. think utility, that yeah, that's where it starts. Yeah. Something like that. That's does where water, does water yeah. have like a monopoly on itself? Like, cause you know, it, com- it, c- it comes from right. and the, di- the difference being like most utilities, even if they're like, like, you know, are, or like roads, right. We don't have competing roadway systems are either owned by quote, the people in theory as a part of government or regulated heavily by the people as part of the government. I, I don't think we have many good metaphors for a open source solution that enshrines certain freedoms in terms of reusability, reuse, a very we the people kind of philosophy underneath that literally you are allowed to take this code and do anything you want with it on your own, including copying it and changing it and selling support for it. I don't know that we have a lot of good examples of like what, mon- what a monopoly in an open source free tool and trying with certain rights looks like or, or what the impact of that is. Um, it gets blurrier because of, I think the conflation with like automatic and, you know, so there's definitely blurry, fuzzy lines, but I don't think it's as clear cut as something like Windows as a closed source platform monopolizing or Google as a closed search engine monopolizing well, well, market. Well, you know, obviously, uh, Matt Medeiros of the um, Mac Report is a, is a semi-regular panelist on our roundtable show. He's been quite critical of Matt's position and... Um, also uh, uh, was a regular panelist was Morton from LinkedIn um, and you know publicly he's been quite critical of Matt's position about not really welcoming any kind of um, panel or group governance governance body um, that, that similarly operates let's say Drupal for example why why what do you think is really at the heart of Matt's total resistance to any kind of effective partnership with the community when it comes to audience? It's a good question. I think fundamentally there's, uh, there are a few challenges. I think one is, uh, I do authentically believe Matt has a predilection towards simplicity and a predilection to the front to the focus that comes from simplicity. And I think that like the more noise that you introduce in the process, like I think his resistance is as much about bureaucracy as it intruding in the process as it is, as it is control. Um, just like who wants to now spend most of their time playing the politics of like a nonprofit board. I also think some of that, um, and I should say I'm spec, even though I have, a, you know, talk to him sometimes I'm speculating on motives here um I don't have like a secret insight here but I do think um, I do think uh well you're a very bright guy and you've been committed to WordPress for a number of years I thought you were one of the people and I've got some really well-known figures coming on the show you're not you're not the only one I'm going to be asking this question so I'm not picking on you Jake oh no, no I know you're not um I do think he I do think it's also possible that he uh, feels like WordPress's success, its growth, its opportunity has throughout its history at various points been stymied by the, 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 the process of open source. Um, like if you think of like, so why has, to use it as an example, why has Squarespace been able to gain traction and grow so quickly? Yeah. Because, you know, leadership comes from the top and it's kind of like our way or the highway. Yep. Do we, think it's, do we think it's fair to say that there is a threat to WordPress and keeping up with the competition and staying fresh and on top of rapidly changing technology? No question. If we suddenly introduced like government advisory panels and governance boards that needed to approve and, and manage, like, you do start getting this like things start to slow down, move more slowly. I don't know that you can afford... You can always afford to do that in a space like technology if you want to be relevant. Five, yeah, the, um, I, I, I think one of the things that concerns people is when Matt makes a statement, it's linked to our conversation as the part, the podcast part of the show, is when, when he makes a statement where he's looking for WordPress to really get about 70 to 80% of the market, which in my p- opinion will never happen. But let's say if it gets to 50%, he then um, 
like Matt Medeus, he kind of puts forward this landscape where um, Jetpack and WordPress.com really becomes the major competitor to the downloadable WordPress and to all the consultants and other people that have contributed really like your own agency and all the other kind of consultants, one person developers, all the ecosystem that have enabled WordPress to get really this traction in the marketplace where Matt um, seems to think that somehow it's linked to Jetpack or, and it, it, the, the, it kind of really kind of strains reality in a way. What's your, Am I rambling or is there some... No, I know what you're saying, of- but I think, I, think Matt, I think Matt recognizes, especially if you look at how much time he spends in the, his talks talking about the community and WordCamps and engagement, I think Matt recognizes that the community and the ecosystem of developers, people who are passionate about WordPress, is what is enabling WordPress to grow as fast as it does. He sees it as part and parcel of its long-term success and trajectory. I think he is smart enough to know that trying to stomp on that community, trying to suddenly pivot to a place where he has total control of the marketplace and consumes most of that, most of its resources would be foolish in the long run. And I think he argues that because WordPress, his, argu- his, his argument is fundamentally, we could get, again, can go to a long philosophical conversation here, but his argument is fundamentally that because WordPress is open source, there is a check against that. Windows like, or AWS, like one of these, you don't have a choice. Right, like, there's no like I screw you. I'm gonna not pay you a dime and take take you know take my you know go my own direction. There is kind of that option in WordPress. It's a little disingenuous to say it's quite that simple, but it's not entirely. Like if we really, no, I, 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 yeah, yeah, I see where you're coming. My only um, the other thing is you know about which is back to this book winner takes all. This you know he talks about community and I take. I totally accept your remark that he spends a lot of time, but is that in some way contradictory? I'm looking for the right word. Contradictory? Uh, Yeah, with a a 300 million investment from Salesforce.com and their investment arm, because obviously they're going to want a a very large return on that kind of investment, aren't they? I don't, so I don't, don't, maybe I have blinders because I'm excited. I mean, I'm excited about that investment. I don't think that investment's contradictory. I think Salesforce's investment there is as much about their fear that other major enterprise CMS players like Adobe are going to move up market in the way you were talking about earlier for WordPress into CRM and cut their part, cut their core market out. That, that's to be fair. That is partly me hearing from sources, partly me speculating, but I think it's fundamentally about they want the web's most popular CMS to lead to the world's most popular CRM is the natural choice as opposed to letting say Adobe or Acqui or one of these others that are trying to move into the, we also do CRM as a solution, take over the market. So, and I think, I think Salesforce pushing WordPress as an organization as a great CMS choice and a great integration for a great integration for their CRM. If you're trying to do web content will be good for the WordPress community. It will give us more opportunities. It will bring more to the market. It will validate, you know, it'll, it'll validate WordPress and help it grow. So I don't, so I don't see those as contradictory. I mean, there's, I don't think like Salesforce is going to say like, we want, you know, I just don't see Salesforce's investment as causing them to like take over some part of the market that oh, the that's great. Community is already invested in. Maybe there's somebody somewhere that was trying to build the next WordPress CRM platform as a competitor to Salesforce that is worried, but I mean, Salesforce is also is not going to be the choice for every, you know, for every website. So. Maybe I'm remembering now, but I, I, no. I, feel like, I, I don't see this contradictory and I feel excited about that investment. No, I think your insight's been fantastic. It was one of the reasons why I wanted you to come back on the show because uh, I wanted to see what your thoughts about this were. And I think you've given some real great reflections. We're going to wrap up the bonus content. I, I don't want Jake to think he's been too interrogated. <laughs> uh, I, like, but, I like interrogations. Uh, um, but he's been very um, he's, he's given some great insight to us listeners and viewers and um, we'll be back next week with another great discussion like the one we've just had we'll see you soon folks bye yeah.